Ah, uh, yes, here we are, out on the road again, trying to find yet another CD drive for the Saab. What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs and I want to thank you so much for joining me today. We are in the Grand Am heading to Akron. Uh, we have about 25 minutes left because I'm going to the junkyard out there, the Akron Pull Apart. Um, they seem to be the only ones <laughs> right now who have a 2006 Saab 93 2.0T on their in their inventory. Um, it hasn't been there for long, according to their website, and they only have the one. So, from the description that they put online on their website, it pretty much matches my Saab. So, it should have the single disc CD player. So if you may recall, or may, you may not recall, the last video that I did in regards to the whole Saab stereo system with the CD player is, we went to my more local junkyard. We found a CD six disc changer, and it turns out that that does not work. Um, so, I guess, you know, the actual changer, the whole CD drive itself, is actually its own module. And I didn't really think that it would be. Um, my original plan was to buy a single disc CD player and just swap out the guts, swap out the mechanism leaving the circuit board and all that stuff alone because typically I do believe that is where the memory and stuff for the, you know, the VIN, I think that that's usually where that is. So I just wanted to change out the drive, but my local, you know, uh, junkyard didn't obviously have that. We had a six disc. So I just kind of changed my course, thought maybe we can plug the six disc in and it would work. And it kind of did. The mechanism took a CD in, it spit it out, it took another CD in, you know, I mean, the, the disc changer works fine, but it wouldn't read anything else, you know, wouldn't play, and obviously it, it, it probably locked itself out because the whole VIN number thing is not the same. So then, I decided to put the old CD player back in, and then I wanted to figure out why the actual disk drive in mine wasn't working. So I had it apart. There was a CD that was stuck in it from my stepsister. That's when it broke on her. She had a CD in there. And I was, you know, figuring out why it was stuck. But I did, however, ruin the ribbon cord on the inside of the disk uh, CD player. Didn't realize it was that short. It kind of got yanked out a little bit. It kind of crinkled up a little bit. And ever since then, the um, the stereo, the entire stereo unit in the Saab has not been cooperating as well as it usually does. I honestly think it's the ribbon. Um, that CD player, the information of all the songs and all the disc reading and stuff is actually traveled through that optical laser line, which is what they consider the OBUS. And the OBUS is the gateway communication throughout that entire entertainment system in the Saab. All the modules have to pretty much see and transfer that optical light that is how it transfers and decodes information between one another. Um, the CD player does have its own optical line. 
and when the CD is being read, it also, all the music information is traveled through the optical line back to the actual audio module. And then obviously the audio module decodes it and that's where you get your music. So I think when I messed up that line by accident, that ribbon line inside, I'm pretty sure I may have actually messed up the communication between the CD module and the rest of the audio modules in the car. Um, the audio module is supposed to wake up when it receives a signal from the ICM, which is the cluster of buttons on the dashboard with the entertainment display. That is where all of the information is sent back to, obviously. So if the ICM is supposed to wake up the audio module, the CD module, everything has to feed back to the ICM. And I think because of the fact that I messed up that ribbon cord inside the CD player module, the communication, I think, is a little slow. Like, you know, like I, since it was kind of pinched, it takes a while for that audio module now to wake up. That is what I am assuming, because it was working completely fine before I opened it up. And like I said, I made the mistake. I wasn't really paying attention to the fact that that cord was so short. I was just trying to look at the gear mechanisms and stuff on the bottom side of it, and that is what happened. So I need to try to fix this because it is driving me crazy. Um, <laughs> I, I want it to work the way that it should. Um, and that's why before I, I start you know, going to eBay and, and paying a ton of money for another CD player or something, uh, we're gonna try this last ditch effort at the junkyard. So my plan of attack is hopefully, and like I said, there's only one shot to do this. One shot. They've only got one sob of this generation. Hasn't been there long, so I hope, really hope that the CD player is still with it. I'm gonna go with my original plan. We're gonna buy the CD player if it's there. We're going to transfer the CD drive itself, the mechanism inside, and the ribbon over to my existing CD player, as I had originally planned, and hopefully, I really hope that it resolves this entire issue. If not, then I can either live with it the way it is, or I'm going to have to start going to the whole maybe eBay aspect, you know. Um, so, yeah. I don't necessarily care the fact that it takes a while for the stereo to wake up. Because when the stereo is on, it seems to work okay. I, the CD player still doesn't work, obviously. Again, I think it's my fault this time. But... I'm just more so concerned at the fact that I don't want this issue to ruin any of the other modules that are related to this system. And I'm talking everything, the in entertainment or the infotainment control module, the audio module, the amplifiers also have to use this optical communication OBUS. Um, so there's a lot of other modules that depend on the communication between all of these, you know, all of, the, all of the system. And I just want to make sure that this issue doesn't carry on to anything else. And like I said, fingers crossed that this module, the CD player, is still with this sob. Here we go. Let's see if we can find it. It's a white 932.0 row 315. I've only been here one other time. It was during the Aztec building days. So I'm not real familiar with this place, but this must be 
What, three, row three? I think we got a ways to go. Well, found it, 315. It has been gone through. is all oh man it had the exact same system um there's stuff everywhere it may actually still be in here Jeez. or not oh, man. freaking glass is like busted out and everything Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Crap. There it is. <sighs> oh man. Well. You gotta be kidding me. Really out here? <sighs> okay, I kind of like this. Hmm. <sighs> Seriously. <sighs> Doesn't do that. This was open and it's just full of ice. Oh, that's, that's terrible. What's this? I don't even know. It's just modules everywhere. Seriously, I don't really understand the whole breaking of the windows. The manual. <sighs> I'm pretty sure that was my CD player that just fell. That's it. I don't think that's part of this car. Oh, indeed it was. I can't believe that it was still here. Oh, that's unbelievable. Well, I did open it up. There is some ice inside the drive itself on the board. Um, there's the ribbon that I need. It's probably okay. I cannot believe that this was out here. Oh. Crap. Well, like I said, I don't need this stuff. I wanted this, but if this doesn't work, because of the ice. It may even be broken. It may have the same problem that mine has. I don't even know. But I can still probably most certainly use the ribbon from this one. So. <laughs> oh man, that's so, that's so unbelievable. There's nothing in it. I mean, it might be okay if it thaws out and dries. I don't know. I think I'm going to buy it anyway. Because, like I said, this ribbon is probably still perfectly fine as long as I don't mess it up. 
so I don't, I don't know how much they want for it <clears throat> it's it better not be like an arm and a leg I think it was this way there not be an arm and a leg for it Maybe because of the fact that it might not work all right uh, one last look before I go. I don't really think there's anything else that I particularly need in mind. <laughs> Somebody tried taking the badge off the airbag hub. They didn't succeed, apparently. <sighs> wow, this poor car. <clears throat> I just, uh, of course, the only one that's here. The only one that's here. This is what I gotta deal with. <laughs> but I did drive, you know, 45 minutes out here to get this. So I'm not leaving empty handed. I can at least use that ribbon. All right. Oh, they, they took the cup holder. The cup holder is something that I could maybe use. And this poor thing. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't call this white. <laughs> like they said it was. Ah, it's giving me frostbite, man. It's cold. This vehicle has been identified as containing one or more recalled airbags. Ooh. The mirror's not supposed to be like that. Jeez. Come on, people. All right, let's go. $32 later. I've got a piece of crap CD drive that's probably not going to work. Um, I it's it's literally starting to just pool water, so I've got it sitting like this because I want all the water to kind of run out of it that way. Um, I don't know why I grabbed the face, maybe so they knew it was a CD player, but the face is totally trashed, um, so I don't need that part, you know. <sighs> And that marker that they put on there, man, that is some potent stuff. Man. Alright, so by the time we get home, there's going to be water probably all over that mat. And, uh, I'll start tearing the inside of my saw apart. And I guess we'll see if we can get any of this stuff to actually work. It's kind of weird having the uh, Grand Am out here. I wasn't sure if I should take the Grand Am because those transmission lines are actually making me a little nervous. Um, but, she got me here, so as long as she gets me back home. But, it's weird because uh, the Grand Am actually came from this area. Uh, this is where I bought the Grand Am from. Not not too far from here, just, just a few minutes away out here in Akron. So, it's kind of weird to have it back out here where it originally came from. And of course, I didn't drive it home from Akron, it was towed home. So she's come a long way to be back out here on her own. All right, so we're about halfway home. I put all the heat on the floor and I have the module sitting down now. So I wanted to hopefully get warm, you know, the case to get warm. And Hopefully it's melting everything that may be left inside, you know, just to kind of raise the, the chances of this actually being as successful as I hope for it to be. But I will say this, at least I didn't leave empty handed. It's worth a shot. All right, we're home. So been gone for two hours and about a hundred miles later, <laughs> nice and toasty uh, the bottom side is a little cold but you can see all the water covers nice and hot I don't hear anything sloshing around so that's good 
All right. Whew. I'm roasting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess now I'm going to take everything apart in there and really hope that I can fix my mistake. Burr. It is pretty cold in here. Uh, let me see if I can get it to do it. So usually when the car has been off for a little while, and I mean, you know, if uh, if I'm driving it and then I go into the store and I'm in the store for a little while and then I come out, it will usually always do it. Um, you put the key in and I always leave the radio on. You know, I never turn the radio off. So basically when the key is in and I go to turn it on. See nothing, no chime, no display. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. So this module here is obviously on because we have power to it. But this module is responsible for waking up the audio module behind the climate controls, the CD player, the amplifiers, and a couple of other things. The SID, the SID, you can see there's no information on the lower part of the, oh, there it is. So see, it just woke up. So that's what I'm talking about. Never had that problem before until after I tried to exchange the CD player drives and I messed up the ribbon. In fact, I think when I was filming it, after I put everything together and while it was on, it actually shut off and I was wondering why and then it came back on. So it probably, like I said, I think I'm really hoping it's because of the ribbon being messed up. Uh, responding to getting it into aux mode is a little slow also. So if I hit the source button and it, it automatically goes to CD, but I should be able to hit the source button immediately and look, no aux. So then eventually it's going to go back to the main menu. Then I hit source and then it goes into aux mode. So even that is different. And I really do think it's all because of the fact that I messed up the ribbon inside this disk drive. Um, if by chance that I did not cause the issue, and like I said, I'm, I'm like 99% sure at this point that I did it, then I must have woken up another issue that maybe was going to happen at some point. Somebody did have this out at one other time before I had the car because all of the harness and stuff were pinched pretty tightly back there. And that could maybe be a problem. There may actually be a break somewhere in that optic line that I don't know about. And it's taking a while for all of this, all the optic data to transfer back and forth from module to module. So that is, that's the issue right there. Um, when it's on, like I said, enjoy a nature valley sweet and salty. you know everything appears to work okay there's been a few instances where i've gotten a lot of static and then the static goes away so <laughs> you know I, I i don't know i really hope that it's it's all because of this stupid little ribbon um so let me get this stuff out we'll open it up we'll transfer the ribbon and then we'll go from there at least the one good thing about getting this thing today is I didn't have to actually go through all of this stupid work. Um, I'm getting kind of tired of taking these in and out. I did, however, notice that when you remove the lower parts before you actually remove this unit, um, it does make it slide out a little bit easier. Uh, getting this out is a little challenging beforehand, though, so... So at this point, see it comes on right away because it was already awake. That's the weird thing, you know. It's when it sits for a while and then you go to re restart everything. That's when it doesn't wake up right away. So try to get this thing down out of here for a moment. Yeah, see it, it all slides out so much easier once that little um, tray is removed. So the wiring is obviously tucked in. It's tucked into the bottom of the dash, I think. So you gotta try to lift it up. I might need both hands. Hold on one second. It's 
especially because everything's cold. There we go. All right, here we are. We're back at this again. This is the one climate control connector. Here's the other one. These things, like I said, I think somebody pinched them in there really good. But I was able to kind of straighten them out so you could tell there's more slack in them now. All right, let's get this away from the shifter. If I can only put the car into park with one hand. Come on. Get this thing out of the way a little bit. There we go. All right. There we go. So now we can disconnect the three connectors again. We got the one main cam lock here. This is all of the actual radio, including the optic. Never look at that real close, by the way. That is an actual laser, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, the antenna at the top here, which is really complicated from this angle. There we go. And then the actual disk drive connector, which, like I said, also includes the optic. It's not on now because the um, signal hasn't been passed. Here we go again. So now I have to disconnect the audio module to get the actual CD player apart again. And, uh, yep. All right, so this is the inside of mine. There's the ribbon. The damage is on the other side of it. So now I have to remove this again. Um, I think the back is free. Yeah, the back side of it's free because the two screws for that are actually part of the cover screws as well. So uh, the two here, this one and this one, I believe, are the two that I need. And then uh, I can flip that disc drive over. Okay, so the screws are out. We can flip this over again. And right around there, you can kind of see how they're, they're kind of creased. <laughs> it's all kind of creased right around there. Um, may have actually been possibly torn a little bit up toward the top. So this is what I have to replace. Now, after I replace the ribbon, and hopefully, like I said, that's... I really hope that's all that's wrong with it. I am going to try the drive just for the heck of it while it's still apart. We'll put a CD in it, see if it actually plays, takes it in, takes a CD in, you know. Um, this was the problem. All these gears here, that case that holds those gears cracked at the screw. So the gears were just kind of stripping because there was nothing holding them together. And that's why the CD would not eject. Um... So, I super glued it down. <laughs> um, it's still hanging on there, so that's a good sign. So maybe, um, you know, maybe that solution worked. I bet that one before, I bet that one probably has the same issue. Um, okay, but anyway, because I honestly don't even know if I'm going to use that drive. Um, I don't know. It, it the fact that it was all wet and stuff. I mean, if the, if I can't actually get the CD player to work, then that's fine. It has a, this car has an aux cord. It's okay, but I do need the modules to connect to one another properly. So the ribbon for sure is something I'm changing out regardless. So let me throw this here with the rest of my parts from my stereo and. Let's open this one back up again. We'll get the drive out. And then, um, yeah, then we'll take that cable out and hopefully the cable is okay from the water. I'm assuming it's, it's okay. We don't need this, this thing's already broken. It won't come back off now. There we go. Yeah, somebody really did a nice number on that one, so. We'll just throw that there. Okay, so this is inside the one that we just got from Akron. So there's still some water, still some condensation sitting at, in the actual disk drive. 
I got the front screws out. Let's try and lift it up and see very carefully so we don't break the new ribbon. Uh, a little bit of water on the ribbon. Uh, that gear set, I wonder if that gear set is good. <laughs> um, no, you know what? I see the crack. So I think this one may have also may also not work correctly I think it's cracked that is where mine was cracked so this one probably has the same may have the same issue all right yeah there's some water under there it's not really soaked you know like I thought maybe there was actually gonna be a bunch more a lot more water in here but not really. I mean, I still wouldn't trust all this stuff. Alright. But, this ribbon... <laughs> this ribbon still looks really good. So now i got to carefully try not to destroy it. I think what happened with mine was I had... When I had the CD player upside down, something shifted. Didn't realize that it was stretching the cable out, and that's when it, it kind of pulled it out. So, um... We just gotta be extremely careful with this one. So um, let me put this one back over there, and I'm going to remove the ribbon from my drive. Now this uh, this is important because what holds the ribbon in are these little tiny black tabs. You see one there. You see one there, and, and it's the same on the actual board itself. So pull that, pull that, and then it just comes out, yep, like that. Yeah, see, I think I, I think I messed it up pretty much trying to get it back in. It's all creased, and I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's just me or not, but I feel like there's a slight tear on the very end, so that is probably my doing. Um, so the disk drive, that actually unhooks the disk drive. I'm just going to throw it like that. And now I need to carefully remove the other side of this from... I also don't want to break these tabs off because then I'm in a lot of trouble. I can't get that one with my finger. That's, I might need to carefully use this. There we go. Okay. Nice and easy. Ah. All right. All right, so here's the replacement one. A uh, lot better shape, less creases. Not many creases at all. This is just the same, you know, crease that was in it from, you know, factory. Um, it was a little, you know, the little tiny water beads here and there, so I just carefully took a, you know, a napkin, lightly soaked up the, the water, didn't press into it or anything, just kind of laid it across there, and, and so now I have to push this end here into that part of the board and then get those clips down. Okay, replacement cable is now in place. Sitting down as far as it goes. Got the tabs locked into both ends. Oh, this side started coming out. This side's a pain, so I might have to adjust that because see how it's kind of uneven? We don't want that. So I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to try to do it again. But the bottom half looks like it actually went in all the way straight down to the bottom. There, that's better. I probably shouldn't be doing this outside because my hands are freezing, everything's stiff, and that doesn't really help the whole cable thing because the cable thing is also stiff. But it does look better. It's sitting better than the one I took out of there. So now, carefully get the drive kind of back into position. All right, so got everything plugged back in. The CD player 
is functioning. You don't hear the clicking or anything, so I don't know. Let's see. I gotta start this thing anyway because I've had this door open, so hopefully this module responds right away. And it is not. There it is. Okay, so a little late. Okay, so that's so there must be another issue going on that I've kind of woke up. Everything's connected right. Everything's connected tightly. Get this thing running a little bit. Um. All right, so let's see how this works. So CD. And nope, it's still acting the same. Very strange. Then it goes to aux. All right, so yeah, so it is still acting kind of weird. Darn, I was really thinking this ribbon that I kind of mangled up was the issue. Right at that end there. Right at that end. See how it kind of creased in pretty well? thought that that was going to be it. <sighs> well, out of curiosity, what happens if we throw a CD into it? Will it will it take it? Will it play? I still don't have lights down here too. This is interesting. Usually this lights up. And now it still doesn't want to play a CD. So, I don't know, maybe this got locked out when I tried to hook the other one up. Maybe when I plugged in the other module, it kind of, um, you know, since they didn't match, maybe it locked everything out. And maybe that's why everything's acting weird. Possibly. I'm really disappointed, I thought for sure. So I basically just spent $32 on a ribbon. <laughs> that didn't really do me any good. Back to aux. CD, no CD. <gasps> oh. Hold on. No? Well, that's a little different. So I don't know why it's not really. <laughs> oh man. All right, so maybe it did get locked out. It does say CD off there. What happens if I CD off still? No. But that mechanism appears to be working if it's taking it in and out, and it's not making any click noise. I'm just confused by this. So I think what I need to do now is maybe have it reprogrammed with a Tech 2, which could possibly mean a drive to my old school. So you can use the tech two that I used to use in school. So maybe that's the issue. Maybe it locked itself out because I swapped, you know, I swapped drives right away. And uh, it turned out to be a lot more complicated of a job, of a, of a whole process than I thought it was going to be. So I actually have it, the CD went in, um, but if I hit CD, it still says no CD. And what I had to do was, it spits it out. I held eject just to see what would happen. It takes it in, but it doesn't play anything. So it's acting like it got locked out of its own car, basically. I'm going to assume that it is not communicating 
with the rest of the modules because of the fact that I just I, I unhooked it I threw a foreign uh, you know disk drive in it it immediately realized that it wasn't the right drive that should be there and then when I went to go plug this one back in it's it's not doing anything because it, it's 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 in lockout mode basically that's that's my assumption but this seems to be working so maybe maybe when it wakes up it'll actually play um, you know once I I figure out a way to get it reprogrammed so that's where we're at with it um, I still don't like the fact that it's a slow wake up um, Maybe it's just natural or normal because of the fact that this module is kind of, I don't know, dead in a way to it. So maybe maybe that's the whole uh, thing. But um, I don't know. I'll look into it and the saga will continue. All right, so everything's bolted back together. Everything's attached. The locks are on. All I got to do is slide everything back into the dash and put the climate controls back up. See, it's still, still doing the same thing. There it is. Oh, there's the static. See, sometimes they're static with it. See, I wiggle wires and stuff. Nothing cuts out. I think my first step is getting this module remarried to the car. That's probably what it is. And then maybe everything will go back to normal. And if not, then I guess it's safe to say that when I had it out, I probably woke up another issue um, that maybe was going to come up at some point but so we're going to take the steps um i'm going to probably look into getting my hands on a tech 2 or maybe even taking it to that business that's not far who actually deals with sob maybe they can reprogram it maybe somebody at work has a nice higher end scan tool that you know they can remarry it um and then if the problem still persists, then there is for sure some sort of communication issue amongst this OBUS, and I will have to look more into that, and we'll start testing things from there. I will say, even though I'm not happy with the fact that I spent $32 on a CD player just for this ribbon, it does give me peace of mind knowing that this mangled ribbon is out of there and another one is in there and even though it didn't fix it like I was really hoping that it would at least I know that there shouldn't be any issues down the road as far as what this thing is responsible for so yes I do have the peace of mind even though it was a waste of money it was a waste of gas and a drive out there um, but I do feel a little bit better knowing that the ribbon is actually in a lot better shape than the one that I mangled by accident. That's all. That is all for today. So this will continue on. Uh, whether I actually document it or not, I don't know. I probably will just tell you guys what's happening um, if you know we come up with a solution to it. So for now, that's what we've got. Uh, Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Check out teespring.com slash store slash Mike's Fecal Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. And like I said, that's all I've got for today. So I will see you guys next time. And again, I want to thank you so much for watching and take care.